my mic on, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, wow, thank you, Lindsay, for that worship set, the praise team as well. Uh, yeah, you can give a round of applause, that's okay. That's normal to do around here. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning and welcome to OBC. Let me start by saying thank you for joining us this morning, whether in person uh, or online. It's actually surprising. I didn't think I'd see this many people, especially since it's um, New Year's Eve and Marwin's preaching. So happy New Year's Eve. Um, um, and it's crazy to think that I won't see most of you till, you know, next year. Um, wow. Let's add some applause to that. Uh, <laughs> That, that was a joke. That was supposed to be a joke, and I see that that flopped. My wife is funnier than I am. Um, but sorry, since becoming a dad, you know, my humor is perfect for toddlers and maybe not so much of adults. So again, I want to apologize for that. Um, but can I just say real quickly that it, it is really awesome uh, and amazing that we get to come together as believers of Christ and fellowship and gather and bring glory to his name. Amen? Amen. Uh, when I preach, just so you know, uh, and you don't, you're not shocked to it, I love to coax you into saying, you know, like, amen and hallelujah and all that kind of stuff, right? Hallelujah? hallelujah. Perfect. Uh, but again, I think it really is awesome that we can come together and fellowship in the name of God. And I, I believe as believers in Christ, uh, and even some, to some extent uh, for a lost person, there's a yearning within us for community, right? I think God has placed that in our hearts, to want to have community, because in community, God has created that to hopefully bring uh, glory to his name when we commune together. Uh, and so I, I think this time is really special, and I hope that this time is special for you. And so I'm ecstatic about being able to be up here this morning and, and preach to you. Um, and what I, you know, standing up here preaching from the pulpit, bringing a word uh, from the Lord is uh, sometimes a daunting task. Uh, because I, I don't want to uh, preach what Marwin's ideas are, right? I want to preach what God has to say, right? Uh, if you don't know me, I keep saying my name, but uh, my name is Marwin Dickerson. I'm the youth pastor here. Uh, and uh, if again, if you don't know my family, Lindsay uh, is up there leading today. Um, but uh, I wanted to say, again, thank you for being here. Uh, if you've been with us this past year, the year of 20. 23, I think we could all agree, uh, if you've, um, again, been here, that to some extent, we've been through and experienced a lot of blessings from God. Can we all nod our head with that if you agree? Um, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, some of these uh, came through hardships, um, through some hard times, not knowing uh, really what God's plan was. <laughs> and um, God, I believe, was working us and molding us individually, but as a church, to respond to certain situations and really molding us the way he wanted us to be, right? Uh, and also, I think God has been pouring out tremendous blessings uh, through some good times and great times here at OBC. And a couple of those things are a little bit easier to notice. Uh, and so on your way to church this morning, uh, raise your hand if you're a part of a family. That should be everybody, right? Cool, good. Well, when you were driving with your family here and you pulled into the parking lot, well, what did you see? If you've been here the past two years, there's something out there that wasn't here at the beginning of 2023. Any, any guesses? It was the two new buildings, right? Uh, it's a beautiful site. Look at that picture. Thank you, the Nelson. Do you all take that, right? Cool. Thank you so much for that. Uh, they're standing right out there, uh, right in front of us or behind you or northwest, south. I'm not great with cardinal directions. So whatever that way is, that's where they're at. And they look really cool, and I'm really excited about those buildings. Uh, and the purpose of those buildings, if you don't know, which I think most everybody uh, does know, but the reason for those buildings are to give our church and our community uh, a, a unique thing, and that's to do more things. Uh, and specifically, those things to do are to serve God, Right? And honestly, as a staff and a church, I, I don't even think we can begin to foresee the things that will bring glory to God's name in those buildings. Can you agree with that? It's just amazing that, you know, I'm thinking about super cool ping pong and uh, jungle pong tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, but God's going to do even more miraculous things than that, right? And that's pretty cool. But uh, it's going to be exciting. Um, <clears throat> but those, those buildings out there, those two, have been prayed for a lot. The building team... Uh, lifted up uh, their prayers, and then uh, us as a church, uh, us as a staff, 
uh, have really uh, prayed specifically for those two buildings. Um, and, and if you're a member, like I said, you understand the process uh, that we've been through uh, from beginning to collectively pray about those buildings. And listen, that happened before even Lindsay and I stepped foot into this place, before I even became the youth pastor. It's been in motion for a long, long time. And so that's been super cool. Uh, but then we moved to, to vote to move forward with the process of these buildings. And then the reason in doing that is in praying as we did and then feeling the need to, to, to vote and say, let's do it, let's get on with it, is because we felt that God was saying, move forward with this aspect of our church. There was a strong conviction placed on our hearts from God to grow this church and just to be able to serve and have more opportunities to serve. Uh, and, and again, I said we can serve the community with these buildings, but ultimately, who are we serving? We're serving God, right? Uh, we listened to God's voice. And so another thing that has happened to our church that is really more recent uh, news is we have, if you didn't know, a new staff member, which is super cool. Can we get a clap around there? Yeah, that's cool. Um, and this took a lot of prayer, and this took a lot of listening to God's voice, right? And so today is New Year's Eve, like I said, so tomorrow's a new year, 2024. And on Tuesday, the second, we all come together uh, and, and meet with the staff uh, because, you know, we come back from break. And on that day, Micah Compton will be starting and serving as our OBC missions pastor, right? That's some exciting stuff. I am uh, just think it's super cool and awesome to think about the opportunities that creates for everybody involved, right? Uh, it's cool to think about OBC being on mission for the kingdom of God in the realm of missions, right? And so I'm really pumped about that. Uh, but the bigger picture there is I'm glad that we listened to God in both of those things, right? And I'm encouraged that we took a step of faith and God, I, I believe, and, and shake your head if you agree, that he's already proving in the short couple of months since we've had the buildings and since Mike has been called as missions pastor, he's proven that he's faithful. He's proven himself over and over again, his faithfulness of him. And, and, and let me just say, life is good when we count our blessings, yeah? When, when we, we take time to, out of our day or out of our year, to look back at things that are happening or even in the moment just say, Man, God is blessing me continuously. Life is really good. No matter the situations that you may experience, whether those be hardships or whether those be uh, great times in your life. But, but notice there I said something very specific. I said when we count our blessings, life seems great. But when we miss out on counting our blessings, when we don't do that and practice that, well, what does life seem like? Well, you can start to guess it seems in utter turmoil, Right? Uh, we might say things like, man, this is a disastrous life we live. It is terrible, right? Because what are we focused on? We're focused on the bad things that are happening. And I know a lot of us are going to be doing this tonight, or maybe you do this tomorrow with your family as you celebrate the coming of the new year. You usually do look back at the past year and go, well, what happened in the year? Let's talk about it. What was your favorite part? And I hope that all of us, when we gather together tonight or tomorrow, we can talk about God uh, providing for us, no matter the situation we were going through. Maybe it was the worst season of your life, but you can see how God was providing for you. So that's my prayer and, and hope as we uh, go into the new year that we start to do already today. Because uh, when we listen to God, well, guess what? He has the best things for us. We're going to look at some scripture today because, like I said earlier, I tru truly believe God is trying to speak today. He wants to speak to you. He is speaking to me. Uh, and I don't want it to be uh, standing up here and just be Marwin's words. I want it to be God's words. And, and and like uh, we talk about as a pastor gets up here, what we share with you is something that God has put on our hearts to deal with first. Yeah, do you, does everybody understand that in some sense? Um, and, and I want to make uh, that point very clear because I talked to Justin about this and I always say, man, when I get up there, I'm a young pastor, a young preacher, new to the game, all this kind of stuff. It, it's hard to get up and start teaching and feel like I'm just pointing the finger at everybody, Right. Like, Steve, man, you better change your life. <laughs> um, God's coming for you, you know. Um, sorry, the first person I saw. <laughs> uh, but, but I want you to know that this is stuff that I have to reckon with as well, 
right? I, I don't want it to be a prideful, I don't stand up here with pride in myself. <laughs> I stand up here in pride in God and want to preach his word. And so, like I said, it's been wrecking me these past couple of weeks since Justin told me, hey, you're preaching on New Year's Eve. Uh, I've, been, I've been mulling over the scripture that we're going to look at, and man, in a good way, uh, it's been uh, hard. Uh, before we begin and jump into that, let me remind you, in your bulletin, there's a cool little piece of paper. Um, it's the title of the sermon today, uh, and it also has some notes. So if you like note-taking, uh, there's pins in the back of the chairs, and you can follow along there. Uh, but we're going to be opening up into Luke 8. So if you have your Bibles with you, if you have your phone, your app, Luke 8, and we're going to start in verses 4 and end in verse 15. And it's also going to be up on the screen behind us. But I, I like to let's stand and let's read the word of God. So if you'll stand with me and we'll jump into the word of God. Starting in verse 4. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on a rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than what was sown. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples later asked him, what is this parable, what does this parable mean? And in verse 10, he said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing, they may not see. Though hearing, they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Verse 13, those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they, are, they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go in their life, uh, they're, they're, they are choked by its life worries and riches and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Let us pray. Uh, dear God, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for the time that we can come together in fellowship. Uh, God, I, I hope all of us in here have a heart of not taking that for granted, but realizing uh, this is the best thing for us, is to uh, experience community and ultimately lift up praise to you. God, be with us today. Uh, like I said before, God, we know that you are trying to speak to us every single day. So I pray that our hearts are open uh, to what you have to say. And God, Speak through me. If there's anything I've prepared that doesn't matter, that it's not worthwhile, take it away and let me just speak your truth. God, again, thank you so much for everything you've done. In your son's name, everybody said, amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> when we read this passage, we see Jesus is talking to a large group, right? A group of people who consisted of women and, and men, uh, Jews and Gentiles, and so there's a big group coming from all towns, all directions, out of the woodworks, as we would say, to come hear Jesus teach. And the way he teaches is by what? A parable, which is a story that invokes uh, some deep thinking uh, and makes you say things like, what does that truly mean? <laughs> In some sense, it's like a riddle, right? Um, but it really, again, is trying to get you to understand the concept that Jesus is trying to uh, preach about. And instead of trying to, to figure it out, we get a second half where we get told what it means. Don't you love that, guys? It's like uh, dummies. I'm, I'm a dummy. I need that. And so uh, Jesus starts by, by saying there's a sower or a farmer in other versions. And if you, uh, he starts to spread some seed, right? We saw that video today. It was a cool little uh, video of a guy throwing seed. That's probably what it would look like, right? Pretty close to that. Not with flannel on, but, you know. Uh, and in doing so, they fell upon four different locations. The first seeds fell on the very path that the sower is walking. Uh, and then the second is on some rocky ground. And in the third location, the seeds fell on, or should, or should I say like in a grouping? I don't know how it's referred to as thorns, but a grouping of them, a bushel of them, whatever it be, it, the seed fell in thorns. Uh, and, and some versions even say weeds. And lastly, the fourth location was on good soil. 
And many of us, I would guess, in this room have heard this parable many times. Uh, but maybe, maybe you haven't. I don't want to generalize everybody into one category. category. Uh, but just so you know, Jesus is the farmer and the sower in this story. Isn't that cool? Um, and, and, and what he's talking about is it's in spreading the seed. In the parable, um, in, in real life, a farmer would go spread seed to then grow what? Uh, a, a wheat or whatever they need, maybe. But what do the seeds really represent? And God says, and Jesus says, the gospel or what uh, it says in red lighting, red writing is the word of God. Jesus says that himself. So Jesus states that the reason of this parable is to show four different responses that his created people can have to hearing the gospel. Right? The first seed lands on the path. Satan comes and, and takes that from the person who had heard before or heard the word, but before he could set in their heart and truly believe, it's taken away. And the seed that fell on rocky ground represents those who believe the word of the Lord. And they even receive it with joy. They receive it with joy. They're excited about this new thing. But right when temptation happens, right when testing from the evil one comes, what happens? They fall away from the truth of God. And then the seed that falls amongst thorns, it's a picture of those who hear the gospel and receive it. And, but as they go on their lives, the importance of the gospel becomes less and less. And why is that? Well, it's due to the desires and the pleasures of this world, the riches, as it says in Scripture, which are the thorns, right, that choke out any desire to pursue the gospel and pursue seeking relationship with God. And the seed that I think a lot of us in this room would probably say we are is a seed, when it's spread, it falls on what? Falls on good soil. Meaning the gospel is heard and received with an honest and good heart, and it's held fast. And it bears fruit with what? With perseverance. In other words, we would say this person would be a, an obedient Christian. Now, as I said before, if you've been around the church, not just OBC, just around any church, any religious uh, place, you've heard this um, uh, parable be taught. And usually what follows uh, this parable is uh, the pastor or the teacher who's teaching, maybe it's your Bible school teacher, says a question, and the question is this. Now think about which path you are on. And there's some awkward silence, right, of like letting you really figure it out. I was going to go longer, but you guys were already trying to get out. Uh, but there's that awkward silence, right, that goes on, and they're really trying to rec reckon with it. And the fault to that question is, have you heard the gospel? And if you have, how have you received it? Have you received it with joy, but when tested, fall away from the truth? Have you received the gospel, uh, and you want it to transform your life, but yet you let the things of this world transform your life instead? Or are you landing on good soil? And, and the question, again, that's asked is really for you to, to ponder and reckon with the truth of that. And to be honest with yourselves about what path you're on. What soil do you fall into? And now that I've probably brought back some core memories for some of you, um, I think many people do preach this passage in this way, and I think that's a great application of the text. Because to focus specifically on how we have received the gift of salvation is a great thing. I think that's what the text says. But today, I would like to approach it a little bit different in another way. So if you're a believer in this room you might have already honestly checked out. Wake up, right? Uh, probably thinking, like, oh, Marwin, the young youth pastor, is preaching about the parable of the sower. That passage is only for non-believers. He doesn't know what he's doing, right? Uh, that's for people who don't know the gospel, and they need to get to the good soil, and they need to receive the gospel with an open heart, right? But though, to those out there, again, to, that identify as believers in Christ Jesus who are in the good soil, then what is the application of this text for us? Let me take you back to verse 11. What does the scripture say about the seed? What does the seed represent? Well, Jesus himself said it's the, say it with me, the word of God. Let's try that again. Say it with me. The word of God. Good job. Well, then, Mormon, what is the word of God then? The word of God, yes, is the gospel. 
But the word of God is everything that God has spoken. Yes? Do we get that? It's not limited just to the gospel and that's it. That's why this parable has been really challenging me because I believe it's not just talking to the non-believer, but ultimately this text deals with every single person on this created earth. (laughs) And Jesus is saying, whenever God speaks, these are the responses that his created people can have, non-believer and believer alike. If you have your notes... um, Again, that are in the bulletin. If you didn't grab one, you can go grab one. Uh, But I want you to find where it says truth. If we apply this text as our response to the gospel and not that of everything God says, then we limit ourselves to being just believers. The truth is we are not merely just believers of Christ Jesus. We are followers of Christ Jesus. I'm going to say this again. We are not merely just believers of Christ Jesus. We are followers of Christ Jesus. So yes, we must believe in him to receive salvation. But then even as the text says, is we we can bear fruit through perseverance. So there's more than just believing. There's action that we must take as a believer. So here's the big question for today. Again, on your notes. How as followers of Christ Jesus do we continue to live in the good soil? How as followers, not just a believer, but a follower of Christ Jesus, how do we continue to live in the good soil? Now, remember back to earlier, I talked about this past year and and how we've experienced a lot as a church, and I believe as a staff in the congregation, uh, we have, to the best of our ability, listened intently to God's voice, or um, aka, we've, we've aimed to live in the good soil moving forward with what God has to say to us. But again, what God has really been challenging me with this text is to understand and work through, um, am I, Marwin Dickerson, am I following or am I listening not only what God has for me in relation to the church as a staff member of this church, as a pastor, but but more than that, in me as a, a, a father, a husband, a son, a coach? Uh, am I listening to him even when it comes to my finances? We just talked about that, right? Am, am I, am I, I mean, what I'm saying here is, are we as individuals, as a church, receiving what God has for us? Are we listening to God in all areas of our life? Because I think the parable of the sower deals with, yes, our salvation, like I said, but it's far more than that. It deals with our attitudes towards hearing God's voice. I can't count how many times in my life, uh, and maybe you need to think through this too, but when God is speaking to me through wisdom, direction, conviction, uh, and I respond in three out of the four ways of this parable, Uh, you know, not even, even hearing these things, Uh, that God is speaking or hearing the wisdom and direction and conviction and being really excited about it, even maybe write down a plan of when I go home, I'm going to do this, this, and this. But when temptation comes my way or testing comes my way, what do I do? I run the opposite way, right? I run straight away from the truth, the conviction that I have felt from God. But when tempted, I run away. Or even where I find myself most times, and maybe you can agree, is hearing God's, God speak to me, God's voice very clearly to me, is, man, I, I get really busy, right? And, and you know, God, that's, that's really awesome, all that you're saying, but, but I just don't have time for that right now, <laughs> right? And, and it feels like, you may be saying or thinking, it feels like I'm being suffocated, by other things. I'm just too busy. In, in church, if we're being honest, we can experience all of these attitudes in just one single day. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I mean, right? Uh, in the morning, uh, when, when Jocelyn wakes up, the sweet little angel Jocelyn, um, and, and I tell her to do something, man, it's received uh, with an open heart, and she jumps up and, and goes right to do it. And it's very excited to, uh, for the opportunity to obey Dad, right? It's amazing. Um, but there's a change, there's a shift. <laughs> um, about midday, 
uh, you know, around the nap time, <laughs> um, we see a whole different side of Jocelyn. Um, and some of you are lucky to have been there and seen that as well. Some of you are not. Uh, but, but in this uh, different side of Jocelyn, we see where she doesn't want to receive direction like she did in the morning. Rather, uh, she lets other things like um, toys or, or wanting to watch TV or absolutely any other thing that she can come up with singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Um, but every other excuse she can make to stay up and not take the nap. Uh, and, and because, again, she's letting all these other things become more important than the direction that she's told. Um, and, and let me just be clear here. You know, even though she's making these things uh, more important, she's not listening to dad, she doesn't realize, but we realize, that the nap is the best thing for her. <laughs> yeah? We always try to tell her, Lindsay knows, it's like, you're going to see friends, though, tomorrow. you got to take a nap. We try to convince her because it's like, she has no idea, Right? but it's best for her to do so, yeah? We are no better than a little toddler uh, when it comes uh, to hearing or listening uh, to God's voice, right? Uh, We could be given the same exact direction, morning, afternoon, and night, uh, and respond in three different ways, depending on our spiritual Mood. So the question I stated before, how do we continue to live in the good soil and not in the others? I think we first must uproot all filth. James 1.21 says this, Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can what? Do it can save you. There are many things that we could talk about today that we need to uproot and get rid of our lives, but For the sake of time, uh, I just want to mention some. Uh, These are things that get in the way of truly hearing God's voice and for us to remain in the good soil. The first one, pride. Pride is one of the most dangerous things we as Christians face and deal with. Because if we think we don't need God in our lives and we want to handle things ourselves, I mean, simply we're, we're not listening to God for him to speak. Pride keeps you and I from being open, from being even open to the possibility that God wants to say something to you. Let's look at what scripture says about pride in Proverbs 16. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Not only does this text tell us about the dangers of pride, that it leads to destruction, and having a spirit of arrogance leads to a fall, but it also tells us how to combat that said pride. Well, what is it? We must heed or listen. Whoever heeds God's instruction does what? They prosper. And it says, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. So listening to God is better for you and I. So get out of the way, right? I don't know about you, but I would much rather uh, be blessed in my lifetime than experience destruction, right? Nobody is wanting to go to, uh, in, 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 into the way of destruction, But I'd rather see blessings of my life and look back and say, man, God had me in his hand the whole time. Instead of living a life wrapped around what we want, we must humbly submit ourselves to not our will but the Father. We can't and shouldn't have pride in oneself. Uh, And like I said, I stand up here today not in pride in Marwin, but in pride in who? Christ Jesus, God, right? Right? Another big thing uh, we have to tackle when trying to live in the good soil is fear. Having fear of hearing God's voice uh, is, in some sense, a little rooted in pride. Uh, What I mean by that is um, we are scared of sometimes looking like a religious fanatic. We don't want our reputation to be that, that of someone who is listening and hearing God speak, which sounds silly saying out loud, right? But if you think about it, we probably have struggled with this in each of our walk with God, right? Maybe it looks like you're worried about um, lifting your hands during worship. 
and someone looking at you and be like, whoa, they're kind of awkward or weird, and think of you in a certain way. We're scared of that. Maybe it's the fear of not even wanting to pray in public with your family at a dinner, or maybe you're just by yourself. You're fearful of praying out loud. Well, why? Because you don't want people to look at you a certain way. Or maybe the fear is totally different. Maybe the fear of God, uh, of God is, um, you know, that God is going to ask you to do something that you don't want to do. It's out of my comfort zone to do so. This is a real fear for some. God calls us to do things that are outside of what we feel capable of doing. I was talking to Paul the other day, uh, and we talked about statements that uh, plague the church mindset, right? And one of those is, you know, God will never give you anything. Oh, no, I said that so wrong. God will not give you more than you can handle, right? But it's true that he will. Why? Because God is capable of taking care of it, yeah? So how do I know this to be true? Well, look in Hebrews 13, 20 through 21. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Christ Jesus, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, in our fear, equips us with everything we need to accomplish his will. Amen? Notice how the author also makes a point to, to describe God. How does he describe God? He says he is the God of peace. Even in the equipping, all the skills, all the words, all the things you need to accomplish God's will, you can rest assured, we can rest assured, that we also have a sense of peace to combat those fears. And that's the amazing thing about God, right? The last mindset I want to address today, uh, and trust me, this is not a complete list of mindsets. And like Lindsay said, if I could have an hour, then I would love that to talk about all these different mindsets. But uh, these are the ones that I chose to, to focus on this morning. But I wanted to address the, the mindset of bitterness. We, just as broken people, can't get excited about anything with a bitter heart, right? We can't get excited about even the God of the universe speaking to us and telling us to do something. Because we, we, we get to a mindset and we think things like, uh, well, you know that one time I listened to God uh, and it did not go the way I wanted it to. And so from now on, uh, I'm not doing that again. Uh, if I listen to God speaking to me, it, it won't go and I won't get the outcome I want. It won't benefit me. I mean, honestly, I don't think it'll benefit anybody. But that's a lie straight from the evil one, right? To think, as created people, that when God speaks to you, the thing he has for you to do and put in action should benefit you. Right? The truth is, if it benefits God, then is it worth doing, church? Yes, then it's, it's worth listening to what God is trying to say to us if it benefits the kingdom of God. When that mindset changes, you can start to, we can start to experience the wonderful blessings of God. And, and here's another, um, uh, another wise saying is this, we might not ever get to, to, to see the outcome of our obedience, but a willing heart rather than a bitter heart is what keeps us living in the good soil. Listen, God is consistent. <laughs> he isn't moody. He doesn't change his mind and how he wants to, to talk to us or speak to us. And he never will tell you to violate a principle that's already given in his word. That's a truth that I think helps us understand and change all of these mindsets. And I want to end today, uh, due to time and, and everything, that uh, by extending a challenge and a prayer to myself and you as individuals, but even us as a church. Uh, and that challenge is that in the year 2024, <laughs> that we wake up every day and we strive to live in the good soil. We, we fight the mindsets and the attitudes that we've talked about today that we don't let the cares of this world become our priority, that when, when temptation comes our way, instead of running away from it, we hold fast to the words of God, the truth of God, and confront that temptation. 
But, but really, it, it all comes to letting the words of God fill our hearts and minds and having ears to hear. Jesus called that out to the crowd. Whoever has ears to hear, listen, right? I want us to be challenged by that. And my prayer is this, that we become people who say, yes, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Before even knowing what God is asking and what he's telling us to do. As Lindsay and the praise team make their way up here, I'm also going to call a couple of people uh, up here up front to uh, be up here and just be praying. Uh, Paul, Justin, we all come up here, Susan, uh, John, and John L. And I'll be down in the front. Um, and like I said, this invitation is, um, is simply to respond to God however you felt called to do so. Um, I truly believe that everybody here, I say this all the time to the youth, that everybody is here for a reason. God has placed you here for a reason. That means he's wanting to talk to you about something in your life. And so maybe that is coming to the front and praying with the people that will be down here in front. Maybe it's coming to uh, sit at the benches and kneel at the altar and ask God, what is it that you want me to do? Give me the spirit, give me the mindset to say, yes, God and not to run away from you. And, and let me just be honest, maybe it's responding to the gospel. <laughs> maybe it's the, the first half that we talked about of the parable of the silver. Maybe you need to receive the gospel. And if that's what you need to do today, and you need to reckon with that, then please do so. Don't be fearful <laughs> of coming to God and lay your burdens at his feet, yes? As Lindsay leans, let's respond to God. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, just for this time to be challenged and, Father, to recognize how important it is, our role in receiving your word, surrendering to your word, and then spreading your word. Because ultimately, God, we get to be sowers of your seed as well. So may you find us faithful today and in this year ahead. We love you and we thank you, God, for this privilege. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.